The Green Bay Packers were eliminated from the playoffs on Sunday Night Football in Week 18 by the Detroit Lions with a score of 20-16. They finished the 2022 season with an 8-9 record, which included getting swept by the Lions, getting beat by 17 points by the Jets at home, and getting beat by double digits in Buffalo. This team's future is very bleak, and in today's video, we are going to break everything down from Aaron Rodgers, Matt LaFleur, and everything else. What's particularly notable about this loss is this isn't the first time their season ended on Lambeau Field during the Matt LaFleur era. This is the third consecutive year. They lost in the NFC Championship game to Tom Brady and the Bucks before they eventually won the Super Bowl last year when they put up just 10 points in a home playoff game in what was Devontae Adams' final game as a Packer, and now this. And there is a lot to break down in today's video. And before we get started, I want to take a second to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the global leader for men's grooming and hygiene products. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. The Performance Package 4.0 is a game changer and is the ultimate grooming and hygiene bundle. Inside you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, and more. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. And it's time to take care of yourself and join the over 6 million men who trust Manscaped, so go on over to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free international shipping with code Garrett. Once again, that's code Garrett and a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. And when looking at the Green Bay Packers' future, we have to start with the elephant in the room, which is the quarterback position. I think we can all acknowledge Aaron Rodgers in 2022 was not the same player he was in 2020 or 2021, and it showed in a big way. No matter what number you want to point to, whether it be his own statistics, the team record, the efficiency, whatever the case may be, Aaron Rodgers declined in 2022. Not to say he was a bad player, because he wasn't, and this wasn't a Matt Ryan type fall off, but he is not the same player he was during those insane MVP years. And obviously him not having all pro receiver Devontae Adams played a part in that and especially early in the year. But Aaron is paid to make things happen. He is paid to make plays and get guys the football. And sure, the weapons Rodgers had wasn't ideal compared to what a lot of other quarterbacks in the NFL had, whether it be Joe Burrow and Cincinnati or even what fellow NFC North quarterback Kirk Cousins has. But this is what the Packers signed up for entering the 2022 season, and the first time it reared its ugly head was all the way back on opening day when the Packers had a 75-yard touchdown on the very first play of the season go right through rookie Christian Watson's hands. And in a lot of ways, this summed up the Packers 2022 season, having the opportunity right in front of you and not being able to capitalize. This changed the momentum of the game, and the Vikings eventually won 23-7 in what was just one of two two-score wins they had all year. And when you think of the Packers' 2022 season, it's a lot of missed opportunity. Heading into 2023 is a very difficult situation, and not one a lot of teams go through. It's always easier said than done, because I'm sure there are some Packers fans that want Rodgers gone, or to turn the page and move on to what's next. And to be clear, we are talking about moving on from a longtime franchise quarterback. Rodgers is 39 and will turn 40 during the 2023 season, if he comes back to play that is, and the Packers will move on at some point, it's a matter of when and not if. But what makes this especially tricky is the money he is owed. It's not as simple as, oh okay thanks Aaron, you just earned your last game check from us in week 18, and we'll see you later, thanks for everything. And as I record this, there's a ton of speculation of whether or not he will retire due to the on-field exchange with Lions player Jamison Williams, who asked him to jersey swap only for Rodgers to say, quote, I'm going to hold on to this one, end quote. So if this really was Rodgers' final game, and he does retire, the Packers would have to pay roughly $40 million in dead cap money. And if he does play, he will have a cap hit of $31.6 which isn't bad for the quarterback position in today's NFL, 
but one way or another, the Packers are paying Aaron Rodgers a lot of money next year. And this will not happen, but we will quickly go over this. If the Packers were to cut Aaron Rodgers, they would have to pay a dead cap hit of nearly $100 million, which would take up close to half of their salary cap in 2023, and simply put, that's not a feasible option. Of course, there is another possibility, which would be to trade Aaron Rodgers, and if the Packers are going to trade one of their quarterbacks, it's not going to be Aaron. I ask this truly as nice as I can, but what team would give up multiple draft picks and high draft picks to acquire a 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers? The Packers would presumably want at least two first round picks, and I don't think any team would give that up for a 39 going on 40 Rodgers. So the Packers in a lot of ways back themselves into this corner of hoping Rodgers at 37 and 38 would maintain that level of play for at least the next few years and not have a drop off he did at the age 39 season. There's also another quarterback on the roster they selected in the first round in Jordan Love back in 2020, and we will get to him in a minute, but the Aaron Rodgers contract is brutal to the Green Bay Packers and the plans for their future. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers isn't the only Aaron with a contractual situation on the roster in 2023. And because of who Aaron Rodgers is, given he is a four-time league MVP and will be a first ballot Hall of Famer five years after he retires, him retiring would be a huge deal. But very quietly, Aaron Jones has a cap hit of $20 million next year. Not eight, not 13, but 20. And I think we can all agree Aaron Jones is a very talented running back, but $20 million is a hell of a number for a back that will be 29 years old and is getting very close to the dreaded 30 mark. And sure, the Packers don't use Aaron Jones to the extent of what a team like the Titans use Derrick Henry, but this is something that will always be at the back of the Packers' minds whenever he touches the football. So if both Aarons come back, plus left tackle David Bakhtiari, we're looking at $80 million towards the cap in 2023 on three players with one of them being a 29-year-old running back, a 39 going on 40 quarterback, and a left tackle that will be 32 that's played 24 games over the past three years. So I think in a lot of ways, the Packers are a team that tried to go all in, and I think 2021 was more representative of truly going all in, with 2022 being the remnants of it, and we're at the point of, where do we go from here? And yes, they do have some good pieces on their team, like Zach Tom, an underrated offensive lineman who just had a very good rookie year. And of course, we all know Christian Watson, who finished his rookie year with an impressive seven receiving touchdowns on just 41 receptions. But I do think 2023 will very much be a transition year for the Packers, and I don't have a lot of confidence in this team after that for several reasons. The first is, what would they do at the quarterback position in the post-Aaron Rodgers era? Because I do think Jordan Love is getting traded this spring, and that option will be out the door. I don't think Jordan Love would ever start over Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay personally, and I think the Packers will deal him in a couple of months because of this. So from having a clear successor to Rodgers, this is a lot more murky of a situation. And the Packers saw this year, not once, but twice, the Detroit Lions are here. I've been very vocal about Dan Campbell and how much I love what they have going on in the Motor City, and they have the Packers' full attention, as in Week 18, this team had nothing to play for, yet beat them on the sacred Lambeau Field. And they went from the second overall pick to 9-8 and eight in the span of one year, and that's even after starting out 1-6. When these teams met in Detroit back in Week 9, Aaron Rodgers threw three interceptions, including one that was intended for David Bakhtiari, and they lost 15-9. And in eight quarters this year against Detroit, they put up just 25 points, and Rodgers threw a combined four interceptions. So in Green Bay, I think the situation is similar, but nowhere near identical to the Titans, where they ran a division for a couple of years, and the big difference is, of course, having a Hall of Fame quarterback, but the similarities are there, and no longer running a division, and having a team appear to be on the rise. Oh, and the Packers also have the Minnesota Vikings, who won 13 games this year within their division as well. Truly, I think the best case for this team is Aaron Rodgers retires and they play Jordan Love in 2023 as their starter. 
That's what this team has to be hoping for. But if you're Aaron Rodgers, and this is me thinking out loud more than anything, would you walk away from a contract you signed last offseason knowing you can get $100 million over the next few years? And that's what it's going to come down to most. But this receiving core is not good, and whether the guy throwing to them next year is Rodgers or Love, this will need to be addressed among many other positions on the roster. And the Packers are also in a unique situation that not a lot of other teams are in, or have been over the past few decades, and it's that they've lost on their home field in three straight years. And sure, teams have missed the playoffs three years in a row, or lost in the playoffs three years in a row, but to lose an NFC Championship game in 2020 in the manner they did, by kicking a field goal to make it a five-point game instead of going for it, with a player who just threw for 48 touchdowns, obviously does not look good in hindsight, then the following year to put up 10 points in a home playoff game with an MVP quarterback on your home turf is disgusting and Packers fans would agree. And to summarize the last three years up and why this is a big deal and why I think the Packers are in trouble moving forward is internally I'd be willing to bet there is doubt starting to creep into the locker room. A, well we can get this far but once we get here we'll flame out or something along these lines. Because in each of the last three seasons, one way or another, Matt LaFleur has walked off Lambeau Field losing a game to keep his team season alive. And how long will that last before we see it truly blow up in the franchise's face? How long will it last before players quit on the team? The goal the Packers will have entering training camp next year will be to win a Super Bowl. And I don't want the Matt LaFleur comment to come off like he's a bad coach, because he's not. They've won the NFC North three out of his four years since he became the head coach back in 2019, and have won 13 games in three of his four seasons there, but they have just a 2-3 and three postseason record, with two of those losses to the 49ers, and one in a game fans believe they played too conservatively. The Bucks game is the conservative game. I worry about losing the locker room in a situation like this where we are consistently good, but never good enough to win a ring. This isn't a Matt LaFleur exclusive problem either, as defensive coordinator Joe Barry deserves plenty of blame for how their season went and in some ways ended. The Packers have invested a ton of money and draft capital into their defense, only for it to remain average. They gave up the 15th most points this year, which is right around average. They gave up the 16th most yards, which is right around average. But a 20-16 loss on Sunday Night Football to the Detroit Lions, with a playoff spot on the line, could be how Aaron Rodgers exits the game. His final pass could be an interception. And if there is one thing that stood since Matt LaFleur took over, it's underperforming in big games. And where does this team go from here is a question to start of what will be a very eventful offseason. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it would mean the world. And until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.